Howdy folks, John here. Caught me up on the ladder today. Uh, reason being, uh, we're doing a little DIY project today and I'm going to be showing you what's involved in replacing old fluorescent tube lights with the new LED ones. Now this is a project I've been wanting to do for a number of years and these things have come down in cost now and they're getting good enough that it's making them quite justifiable. These specific ones that I chose, they're made by a company called Paramita. I'll have a link below in the description if you wanted to check these uh, bulbs out yourself. And I'm going to go over in the video here why I chose these ones. These are a ballast bypass. So you actually have to remove the old magnetic ballast in here and I can't wait to do that. You know, these things hum, they flicker, can't wait to uh, get rid of that. But even if you had the newer electronic ballasts, the same process would be used. I'm just going to show you how simple it is. You know, if you've changed a light fixture in your house before, or a light switch, anything to do with electrical line voltage, this is going to be quite a simple little project. And in my opinion, it's so well worth the extra five minutes it takes per fixture to remove that ballast because you're going to get rid of a failure point and they're just going to run more efficient and you also eliminate a lot of compatibility issues. You know, you read on reviews of these things, a lot of them are polarized because people get ones that are supposed to work with ballast, but there's all different types of ballasts. You get rid of that ballast and you get rid of all compatibility issues. Now in my search for information on this project and all, it was lacking. There's so much that's kind of covered over and hopefully I can address a lot of that. One is color temperature. I chose 5000 Kelvin, but we'll look at some comparisons there. The main two I was interested in though was power usage and light output. And I'm going to actually do some measurements. So we're going to check the power usage before the conversion of the original fluorescence and then afterwards. So that'll give you some ideas to how to calculate what the payoff is. Roughly, I calculated with one year I'm going to pay these off in energy savings. And then I'm going to get a light meter and we're going to take some light readings throughout the uh, area of the garage here, both before the conversion and after, to see if these put out the same amount of light, maybe even more. Let's get started. Let's talk about the bulbs a bit. Like I said, these are the Paramita brand that I chose for several reasons. Uh, on Amazon, get really good reviews. They're really good value. They're about $100 USD for the box of 20, so $5 a bulb. And again, these are the Type B I chose, uh, ballast bypass, so you don't have any compatibility issues. Uh, no more ballast hum. You're not wasting power uh, running a ballast as well and you eliminate a failure point. If the ballast go craps out on you, you know, you're gonna have to buy a new ballast then for your conversion, which makes no sense to me. These are 5,000 Kelvin, and each bulb is 18 watts compared to 40 watts for the T8s, but we'll actually check that with the meter to confirm it. I was really impressed at how they were packed. I was a little concerned ordering them from Amazon. Uh, wondering if they'd arrive broken, but as you can see, they are nicely packaged in these nice little foam trays. So there's five bulbs in each of the four trays in here, well protected. And like you can see, these are frosted. You can get clear ones, but I wanted the frosted ones because, you know, with these uh, clear cheese grater lenses, oh, I hate these things. Uh, you know, you don't want to, I didn't want to see individual little LEDs and because uh, these lights hang down, you know, there's light coming out the side. Some LED tube lights, they're very quite directional, you know, they'll, they'll be shielding on half of them. So the light will only be coming out the bottom half. And in my specific type of fixture that would limit light output considerably. But you know, if you've got recessed fluorescent fixtures, where there's nothing shining out the sides. You know, those other type would be fine. And this also came with an instruction manual, as you can see. Just shows you the different installation options. You know, there's so many ways to bypass ballast, depending on the type of ballast. Comes with a five-year warranty uh, registration card. And then it comes with a bunch of these little stickers to stick onto your existing fluorescent fixtures to show that they have been retrofit with LED tubes. So these Parmita T8 ballast bypass LED tubes have several connection options. So they're very versatile either with or without shunted tombstones. Tombstones are just the little doodads that uh, fluorescent bulbs fit in. 
again, these will work in T12 fixtures or T8, doesn't matter, they use the same uh, size tombstone. But you can have single end connection, here I've just got my little alligator clip cord on both terminals of the bulb. You can see when we plug it in, that works fine. You can have a double end connection where you can run power into either pin at one end and either pin way at the other end, doesn't matter which. Plug that in, that works as well. And if you wanted, you could just run one bulb in each of your fixtures if you found they were too bright. And like I said, you could either use shunted uh, tombstones where these two terminals are connected or unshunted like all the fixtures in mine where I can feed each side line and neutral. For any keeners out there who wanted more information on these specific bulbs, just thought we'd give a close up of the uh, label here. You can see it is uh, UL certified, which is good to see. This is the frosted tube, as I mentioned. These actually are a glass tube, but they've got a plastic coating over top. There's the actual model number. Voltage input range 120 to 277, 50 or 60 hertz. Already went over connectivity. And then the usual stuff suitable for damp locations, but you cannot use it with a dimmer. So we're getting our before LED conversion light meter reading. I'm holding the light meter exactly five feet off the ceiling, three feet off the floor. And I'm just gonna walk diagonally across this bay. We're around 220, 250, back to 220. It's getting a little darker in the corner here. 190, 180. Getting fairly dark now, all the way down to about 40 in the corner here. Safety first, of course. Find the garage light breaker and turn it off so we don't light ourselves on fire. There we are, 7B. Now, hopefully I can show this without my big fat melon getting in the frame too often and blocking the view. So, of course, the first thing we have to do is take out our old T12 bulbs. And then take the ballast cover off, or the electrical cover, because it's usually little spring tabs on there. It's just amazing how hot the ballasts get. So you're going to have your hot and your neutral wires coming in. You also have your ground wire, which we don't even bother touching. So we're going to take these off. which is disconnecting the old ballast. Now what I'm gonna do is on this particular fixture, I've got two yellow lines feeding the tombstones at this end. And each wire is feeding each tombstone in parallel. We're essentially doing the single end connection to each bulb. So each yellow wire is feeding each side of each tombstone in this specific uh, type of fixture. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the yellow wiring where the lines come in. Okay, and then at the other end here with the blue and red, I'm just going to snip the blue and red right off, right at the entry point to the tombstone. Because we're not even going to be powering these two end tombstones. And we just unscrew the ballast. I suppose you could leave it in there, but I want to take these out. They're heavy bastard things. Now we'll just get our wire strippers and strip, oh, I don't know, a good inch or so off the two yellow wires that are going down to the tombstones. And we're just going to wrap those yellow wires, one around the hot, get some pliers to wrap them nice and tight. The electrical inspector comes. One of the things they love doing on home electrical inspections is trying to pull wires out of wire nuts. Because a lot of do-it-yourselfers, they'll get those on quite loose and the wire will just pull out. And then, uh, yeah, just route this however you want. Do the same with the neutral here, or the white. Wrap it. 
twist it on good and tight. Put the old wire nut back on. Or new one if the wire nut needs to be replaced. And that is as easy as a ballast bypass is. Nothing to it. And when you put this on, just make sure you don't pinch any of the wires under the cover. These covers, they have notches in the end specifically for the wires to go into so they don't get pinched by the cover. In fact, I don't like this one. It's... There we go. Remember, these are directional. You can see the LED strip on the top, so you want the top up into the fixture. And they've got little dimples on them right there, so you'll know when it's at a right angle in the tombstone. So you want that dimple pointing down after you fit the bulb in. There's one in. Okay, and before we put the cheese grater on, we'll power the breaker back up. There you go, it's that simple. If you only wanted to run one bulb in your fixtures, you can just remove one bulb. Of course, I want maximum light in this garage, so we're going to keep both in and put our nice cheese grater back into position. That's it. Okay, just looking at the power usage of the two fluorescent bulbs. Just have my uh, meter here in series with the ballast and the line in. And you can see it's pulling about uh, 465 milliamps, 0.464 amps. Multiply that by the voltage, gives us our wattage of about 56 watts. Incidentally, I was curious what the uh, ballast would pull with the bulbs removed. So the bulbs aren't pulling any power. As you can see, just the ballast alone is using 240 milliamps. So wattage-wise, what is that, around 25 watts or so? Not even powering any bulbs. So that's what I was talking about, why having a ballast bypass is the way to go. Because these ballasts do use a fair bit of power on their own. At least the old magnetic ones, the electronic ones, not nearly as bad. So now we've got the LED bypass done on that fixture and both bulbs together drawing around 0.277 amps, 277 milliamps. So that's about 34 watts of power usage. Pretty close to the 18 claimed watts per bulb. Not sure how well this color comparison test will show up in the final video, but here's the 5000 Kelvin LED tube lights and here are some original t12 fluorescents that i haven't changed yet and these are cool white apparently they're about 4000 kelvin but you can't really compare color temperatures between fluorescents and leds because they they put out a completely different color pattern another quick comparison between uh, color temperature we're just looking down at the end of the garage here and i haven't done the led tube light conversion yet these are still the cool white t12 fluorescence and i've got auto white balance and auto exposure turned off on the camera so hopefully the representation will be fairly accurate but again the camera just can't do it justice but just looking into the screen here uh, this is a pretty accurate representation of the color temperature and if we pan over to the back side of the uh, garage or shop where I have done the T8 LED conversions. You can see the color temperature is much uh, brighter, more like daylight, but for anyone who has already done one of these LED conversions, if you've done the 5000 or went with the 4000, did both, which color do you like best for a uh, shop or a garage? Please leave comments below. Getting our comparison light meter readings now with the LEDs. Again, we're gonna walk uh, diagonally across the bay floor here and meter again three feet off the ground six feet off the ceiling and we're starting out at around 470 480 or so try to keep the glare down just drop before below 400 back above 400 going to the dark corner well, we're sitting at about 70 or so so pretty much twice as bright in here. 
So all 17 fixtures in the garage have been converted to the LED bulbs and I'm really impressed with the end results as we saw with the light meter roughly twice as bright. Keep in mind that's with brand new LED bulbs and comparing them to you know middle-aged fluorescent bulbs but regardless definitely brighter and I'm really enjoying the 5000 Kelvin color temperature. I think that is a wonderful choice for a garage. I can see why people recommend it. It's going to be so nice working on the cars now and detailing them in here. There's all our old ballasts and I thought I'd just show uh, the actual physical temperature of these bulbs. If you're wondering how warm they get, they don't get warm at all. We'll just take a temperature reading on the back of the bulb here. It's kind of hard to see with the bulb lit up. This bulb's been turned on for about uh, half an hour and we're sitting almost at 40 Celsius in Fahrenheit. What is that? About 100 or so. Yeah. And hopefully that gave you a little bit more information if you wanted to do your own LED T8 uh, tube light conversion. Well worth it in my opinion. And uh, the money savings definitely uh, worthwhile now makes it justifiable. Thanks for watching folks. We'll see you next time. Happy LED conversion.